Good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great thirsty Thursday. You know, I'm sitting here in the man cave doing a little bit of work after uh, getting some work stuff done down uh, down the country on the Red Brick House, and can't wait to get back down in there. And, you know, things are kind of quiet on the Cowboy front. The Cowboys, you know, the Cowboys lay in wait to steal the thunder of other breaking news, you know, like uh, we announced, uh, yeah, I mean, we always make announcements like Kellen Moore being fired right after the Eagles, you know, uh, are going to the Super Bowl. You know, we like to steal thunder from others, you know, just like Jerry Jones wanted to steal the thunder from Jimmy Johnson at the Hall of Fame saying, hey, we're going to put you, we're going to put you in the Dallas Cowboys ring of honor. Really? That was the time to do that? But that's what they do. And of course, we are sitting home for another Super Bowl, which is something we should get used to. And it's this time of year that the Cowboys start spinning things, okay? They start spinning all of the, you know, talk about what they're doing, you know, trust the process and we know what we're doing and this, that, and the other. And basically lying to us about the moves and mistakes that they made and letting us know that, you know, it really wasn't a mistake. We we feel good about it. You might feel good about it because you still got paid, you know? You can sit here and look at somebody like Dan Snyder, whose organization has been ass, that's literally got a stadium that's falling apart, that it's a travesty that they're charging anybody to get there, but yet he's selling a house for $49 million and he's looking for $7 billion for a fixer-up team. But that's the way the money goes. The rich have it, we don't. We got no say in it, even though we're the ones that are making them rich. So last year, you know, we decided, you know, we, we can't afford Amari Cooper, you know. So the Browns said, hey, we, we'll afford him. You know, we said we can't go out there and get extra help and stuff. And it was this time that Catboy got his name because we had let go of our punter and said we can't afford the punter. We had gotten rid of Amari Cooper for, you know, a, a potted meat sandwich. And uh, we were pissing off D-Law and um, J. Ron Curse. And they told us, this is what they said, you know, we don't believe what the Rams are doing, you know, with all of the free agents are, are the way to build a team. And I'm sitting here in my mind like, seriously? So wait a minute. They became, since the last time you were the Super Bowl champions, they became the greatest show on turf. Won a Super Bowl then. And since then, you know, they got bad. They moved to another city, to L.A., you know. Played in the L.A. Coliseum, built a new stadium, which is pretty damn good. Went to a Super Bowl, lost it, retooled, won a Super Bowl, just won a Super Bowl, and you're saying, nah, what they're doing is not right. We believe in our own guys, and spending a whole lot of money is not how you win. And this was after Tampa Bay had gone in and you know got tom brady and you know guys like namak and sue and other you know gronk and won a super bowl and i dare say go back to the eagles who really were the first ones to start making all these trades and all these moves and so jerry jones had went through this past week and said you know yeah the eagle the eagles went all in this year and and everything else like the rams and stuff and you know we we believe that's not the right way to do it because you're, you're taking the chance and the risk and stuff of you know if it doesn't work then you're screwed well i said in the beginning of the year this was going to be a difference of philosophies because you have the Cowboys that believe in their own guys, believe in, you know, allegedly cap management, you know, that we're not going to overspend because the Cowboys started the year off, you know, $25 million over the cap, you know, last year. So I guess in some regards where you see that they're only, you know, $7 million over that you say that's an improvement, Right. That they were going to be fiscally responsible. They weren't going to sign a whole bunch of big name free agents and so on. Unlike what the Rams did. And you can say the Rams, well, they did trade away all their draft picks to get like Ramsey and, and guys and to get Matthew Stafford and 
they're in a position where they don't have the capital to be able to draft a whole bunch of players. And you look at that and say, yeah, well, they won a Super Bowl, and it's going to take a couple of years to start all over. And we're looking at this and saying, that's not good. That's what Jerry's, oh, no, no, no. Because you want to be good every year, but they won a Super Bowl after losing a Super Bowl a few years before. So you look at that and say they had a chance to win one, and they won one going all in. Okay, and now they've got the pain from it. Okay, I get your point. But now you've got the Eagles who are there again after winning it in 2017. They have a chance. There's a chance that they win another one. And so Jimmy Johnson, who should be still pissed at Jerry Jones for being a jackass and firing him after they had won back-to-back Super Bowls and then coming up with this bullshit that we're going to put you in the ring of honor and then you don't and you just play this shit up and talk about him whining and things. Jimmy Johnson basically says, you're an idiot. So... Here's what Jimmy Johnson's take on what the Eagles did. Um, among those wondering what Jones was thinking were Eagles owner uh, Jeffrey Lure and Super Bowl winning Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson. Johnson told the Inquirer that Lurie called him asking what Jones was talking about. Okay. So Jimmy Johnson said, I have no idea. Philadelphia has a couple of first-round picks in 2023, right? Right? They got extra picks down the road. They got some really talented players. And they've got some talented young players. The Eagles are in a good salary shape for 23 and have two first-round picks, their own and the Saints' number 10 pick overall. So it's hard for me to see anyone could claim that they uh, bet it all in this season. That's what Jones is claiming, but few agree with them. I think the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be good for a long time. And is Jimmy Johnson right? Well, let's take a look at this. Because here's what's funny. Here's what's funny. There are hired assassins out there, like Namak and Sue. Tampa Bay brought him in along with Tom Brady and, you know, other players and Gronk and stuff like that, which took a team that was 8-8. Eight and eight. They went up there. They won a Super Bowl. Namak and Stu saved for a couple more years, and then eventually was gone. That hired gun, who was also a hired gun for the Rams, I believe, when they went to the Super Bowl before. I may be wrong on that, so don't quote me, but I think he was a Ram. Let me see. Let me check and see. Yeah, he was a Ram in 2018. So he is a Super Bowl assassin. I think it was 2018. Um, Let me double check. Because that that would be kind of crazy that... um, they were first in the West. Let's see. Yeah. They hired the official Super Bowl assassin in Namakin Sue. So this is Namakin Sue's third Super Bowl. He's got one win. He literally is a Super Bowl, you know, bring in a guy to do the dirty work to help you get to a Super Bowl. That's Namakin Sue. The Eagles brought him in. Here's what's insane. So you think about the Eagles having two number one picks, including a top 10. They are effective cap rate 1 million over or legitimately cap rate 4 million over. Whereas we're 7 million or 9.9 million over. We are in worse cap shape than the Eagles. Our first draft pick isn't until 26. The Eagles will have a first round draft pick 10 before us and one, maybe five behind us or six. They have more cap space and they went out and they got talent. 
So clearly, Jerry Jones is wrong. Now, let's let's look at what the, the Eagles did. Let's go back here. Okay, so the picks that the Eagles have, they don't have a lot of late picks. They have early picks, okay? They have a first round from the Saints. They have a first round of their own. They have their own second round pick and their own third round pick. And then they have not picks until seventh and seventh, okay? Two seven round picks. So they got six picks, but two of them are number ones. So here's how they got the where they are with the talent that they have. They traded their 22, uh, 2023 six round pick for CJ uh, for cornerback James Houston to the Jaguars for cornerback Josh Scott. They made a major trade with the Saints involving eight picks. As part of the trade, the Eagles have the Saints first round pick in twenty three. The Eagles traded their 2023 20, fifth round pick and worse of their sixth round picks in 24 to the Saints for Chauncey Gardner and a 2025 20, sixth round pick. And they traded Jalen Ragar to the Vikings for a seventh round pick and a fifth round pick that become a fourth round pick if he plays well. And we take one of our best players and we get a fifth round pick. So, back to Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson basically said, Jerry Jones, you're an idiot and a scammer. You don't know what you're doing. The Eagles, when you look at that, you got to be afraid. You got to look at that and say, damn, the Eagles are in a great position. And they still have their quarterback on a rookie deal with some time left on there that they can do an extension and keep his numbers low for this year. So, yeah, Jimmy Johnson lets you know Jerry Jones is an idiot. And he's selling us a bill of goods. So, there you have it, good people. Um, and I'm going to say that the Amari Cooper thing, that, that was the worst. You think about Amari Cooper was our second leading receiver last year with like 800 some odd yards had over 1100 this year we literally dropped check this out last year was a bad year for actually amari cooper it's the only year that in the last four that he hasn't had over a thousand yards we still dropped from him having a bad year last year 400 yards in production from our number two wide receiver. And when you take into consideration that we also, our number three wide receiver, went to Miami, we dropped another 300 yards right there in production. So those moves that Jerry made for Amari Cooper that got us a fifth-round pick it was awful it's just awful and to then turn around and take the money you saved and you spent that on michael gallup that you knew wasn't going to be ready to start the season it's just terrible all right good people we'll catch you all on the flip side as we count down to the super bowl peace